The Ohio Senate gets the House budget. Of course, the biennium budget by law has to be passed by June 30th and also balanced. Senate President Keith Faber joins us. Thanks for your time. One of the key questions that you've been getting a lot is the governor's budget, then there's the House budget. The Senate is starting from a different point in the fiscal year, not taking the governor's budget nor the House's budget, and a lot of questions about why. So I'll ask you the same well, thing. Well, we, we decided in the Senate to go back to the end of this fiscal year, the one that we'll, the budget starts from, and that's the zero point. And we also went back to current law because the budget includes a lot of law changes. And the reason we did that was simple. We think that the senators deserve the opportunity to have the same debate that the governor spent over a year on and that the House spent several months on. The Senate only gets to do this for about four or five weeks. And so while our time period is compressed, it doesn't mean that our issues that we should consider are compressed. And so I've encouraged Ohioans from all over the state to give us your input on all of those items. If there's something you think needs to be changed in current law, if there's something that needs more money or less money in the current budget, let us know. The one thing that we have told folks is that the Senate will do a tax cut in this budget. And the question is how we get there, how much it's going to be, and where it's going to apply. That's all up for debate. But by going back to last year's zero base, we are going to basically take out the presumption that everything's just going to grow. And I think that's a better presumption. Let's have everybody justify their expenditures and their needs. And that's part of responsible government as well, is it not trying to take the most rosy estimates of where we might be in two years on down the road? Well, we believe in doing more conservative estimates of, of what our spending needs to be and where we're going to be. Um, one of the things that we're going to have a great debate on is how we make government more efficient. And I think it's real tough to talk about efficiencies if you don't incentivize efficiency. And the best way to do that is, is making sure you start at, at zero base. There are a lot of concerned school systems. There are a lot of concerned parents. Very hard to pass a levy in many school systems across the state of Ohio. The House had gone ahead initially and embraced the phase out that was presented and agreed to with school systems on tangible personal property tax back in, I think it was 2005. Then they turned around and held these districts harmless at the same amount of funding. As you, the Senate approaches this issue, when there was already an agreement in 05, what is your message to people when it comes to phasing out and still part of this whole school funding reform idea? We're going to consistently have a discussion in the Senate about where we need to end up and what good government means when it comes to school funding. But let's not forget something. One of the problems we've had with school funding over the years is that every two years we come up with some new plan. We start a plan that we're going to phase certain things down to make it fair or make adjustments and then we come back and say, oh, no, 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 we don't like how that's working, let's tweak it. Isn't it time to offer our school districts some consistency and stability? Now, part of that to me means that we need to fund kids. When we do guarantees and we do phase outs and we do adjustments, what we're really doing is taking out of this pocket and putting it over here because, well, we like you more. Ultimately, that gets away from the message of funding kids. And so the Senate is very insistent on going to a per pupil based funding system, a situation that gets rid of these caps and guarantees. Uh, if you're capping how much a school district who's growing can get, you're adversely impacting the funding for those kids in that growing school district. If you're putting a guarantee under a school district that's losing enrollment, what you're doing is overfunding those kids and not saying to the school district where the kids went to that you're going to fund the kids who moved. That's neither fair or equitable. It's all done for political purposes. My preference? Stop playing politics with school funding and let's play funding kids. And so that's where we're going to look to go. Um, the Senate kind of likes the school funding formula we did two years ago that started us on the glide path of eliminating caps and guarantees. Um, I'm okay putting more money into K-12 funding. We always do. But in the end, we need to make sure that we're doing it fairly and equitably. And when we start messing with adjustments, ultimately we're tweaking where the money goes. And as somebody who represents a lot of those rural school districts who were adversely impacted by the governor's original tweaks, uh, my school districts have concerns about that because it sends monies to other districts. Let's get to a consistent fund, funding formula and let's follow through on it. Senator President Keith Faber, thank you for your time. Thank you.